Well, my trip to the botanical garden was a success. I did scrap up a handful of monarchs that were out there and I caught them with this butterfly net. It's um, made just for capturing butterflies and moths. It's a real fine mesh, so really tiny holes. It's a real soft net and then it's funnel shaped. So when you see um, one of the butterflies on a plant, you'll just kind of come down like this and the animal almost always wants to fly up. So it sort of flies up into this cone part of the net and then it's real easy to just kind of grab it around here and you'd have your monarch down in the bottom. And then from there, it's just carefully getting it out of the net and getting it into a cooler that is pre-cooled off so that that monarch will slow down, get less active, not beat itself up in the cooler. So once you've had them in the cooler for a while, um, let's see if I can open this up and show you. There's a few flitting around, but for the most part, they get real inactive. And even these ones that are laying on their side are still living. They're just really, really cold. And you can keep them that way if you keep them cooled off and don't put too many in one container um, for a week or more. So we're going to get ready to apply some tags to our Monarch butterflies. You purchase the tags through Monarch Watch and you always apply them in the same place on every Monarch. So when you're looking at a Monarch butterfly, I'll just use my little puppet here, it's a little easier. So when we tag our Monarchs, we're going to hold the wings together so they don't flap around. We're going to turn the Monarch on its side and we're going to tag it in a certain place. But the first thing we have to do is tell, is it a male or a female? So on my puppet, I've got it marked on the top side. When you look at the back wings, on that vein that runs on the wing, there's going to be sort of an enlarged black pouch. That's the scent pouch that just the male monarch butterfly has. So if we see an enlarged place on that vein on the back wing, then we're going to write M for male on our data sheet. If we look at the back wing though, and it's just a vein with no raised or, or bigger enlarged area, then that would be a female monarch. So we'll make a notation of that. Once we know if it's a male or female, we'll hold it and turn it so we're looking at the right underside of the back wing. And right in that cell, that sort of mitten shape, that's where the tag gets applied, as, as close to the center of that cell as you can get it. Then once you've done that, you'll press that tag through the wing so you're sure it's really adhered on there. And then we'll put our monarch butterfly in our net bag. Um, I've already got my tag numbers written. It was the four letters and three numbers. And I've got my cooler that I've been keeping them in to keep them cold so they're not going to be fluttering around and beating themselves up in here. So just as if they were in Mexico up in those mountains in cooler temperatures, they're doing the same thing. They're just real inactive. So the first thing you're going to do, you want to hand them as little as you can, and you want to hold the wings together to keep them from flapping around. See that dark spot right there? That's the scent pouch. So that tells me that this is a male monarch. So in the column for the sex, we're going to put male. I've already got my tag number and the date. The location was Apalachicola at the Botanical Gardens. And then you always turn the monarch so that the back bottom side of the right wing is facing up. And right above where I pointed at that scent gland, there's a cell. You always put the tag inside that mitten shaped cell in the bottom right back wing. And then after I get it in there, I just press down and there's our tag right on that mitten shaped cell. Now it's going to flop around a little because it's got to kind of warm up. Once all the monarch butterflies have been tagged, they're taken to a location where it is safe to release them as close to where they were collected as is possible. And the reason for doing that to tag the monarchs would be to, so scientists can better track and understand their migration. So any monarchs that I tag today or during this tagging season that might run through November, any that I tag in the fall come probably early spring, usually by March or April, I can get online and search for those tag numbers and see if any of the monarchs that we tagged in Apalachicola were actually found down in Mexico.